Welcome into the Michigan Football Report. Ladies and gentlemen, it is Friday, May 31st, and we are back and better than ever. I am your host, James Yoder, the undisputed, undefeated king of Michigan football, the Michigan football media heavyweight champion of, uh, I guess, Detroit and Ann Arbor, certainly not the world. It's a few people outside the United States care about Michigan football. I am sure about it. We are the show that the athletic department and the blog boys don't want you to know about because we are truth and freedom, giving you all the inside info into Michigan football that you need to know headed into this May 31st into June weekend. So let's take a look at our nine biggest storylines and rumors around Michigan football, starting with some news that was announced yesterday, kind of under the radar. So I know it's news, technically not rumors at this point, but it was basically like a news dump right when Michigan was having their press conference for Jawan Howard, introducing him as the next head coach of the University of Michigan basketball team. The night game, Middle Tennessee State will in fact be a, I'm uh, sorry, the opener, Middle Tennessee State will be a night game for Harbaugh heads on that one. It's just news at this point, but it is significant in a few ways. I thought it was going to be Michigan Army the second week of the season for a uh, night game for the Michigan football program. Turns out it's going to be Middle Tennessee State, which will be Michigan's first time ever having a home game uh, at night to open the season uh, in, in this program's history. Now, going back to 2011, the first time Michigan ever had a home game, I'm sorry, a night game in general. So not like this happens a lot. Michigan six and one all time in night games. So nevertheless, that is the story there. They will play Middle Tennessee State August 31st in Ann Arbor, 7.30. It's going to be on the Big Ten Network. Middle Tennessee State went eight and six. They lost in their Conference USA Championship game last year. Of note, you see there towards the bottom left hand of your screen, we all remember Middle Tennessee State. James, I've never heard of this team. Who are they? I don't know anything about them. Of course you do. They were the team, I think it was a 15 or 14 seed, beat Michigan State in the NCAA basketball tournament in 2016. So when Michigan beats them in football, you know, it's one more thing all you Michigan fans have over the Michigan State football, I guess, athletic department. Hey, we can take care of our business against teams like Middle Tennessee State. First ever home night opener for Michigan, as I said. And of course, coming off 10 win season for the third time in Jim Harbaugh's four seasons at coach, which leads me to a question for you guys, the esteemed award-winning Michigan Football Report audience, do you like Michigan night games? I guess more or less the home games, but I guess I'm gonna throw in your comments below on YouTube, Michigan Football YouTube channel at youtube.com slash Michigan TV or the Michigan Wolverines by Chat Sports Facebook page. Give me a Y for yes and N for no. Do you like Michigan night games? Let's specify home games here. Let's specify home games. But if you want to add some comments on road, if you're an old curmudgeon that likes to go to bed at 9.30 and wake up uh, to, uh, to walk the dog at 5 a.m. and these night games are just throwing off your weekends, you can put that too, whether it's home or away. So let me know below why for yes and for no in the comments section. We'll keep it rolling with rumor number two. Now we're getting to the juicy stuff, the gossipy stuff. I heard from a good source a couple months back at this point, it was going to be Army and Notre Dame, as I told my dad this weekend, a little bit of a church and state. Army and Notre Dame is the two night games. Not going to be Army, Middle Tennessee State. I think, though, three Harbaugh heads. I want to give it a four, but I just want to have a lockdown source on this one. The TV networks, the Michigan's TV contract, says that they can be forced to have three night games every two years, which is a, certainly a different uh, you know, setup than in the past with, uh, with Michigan never having night games, so 2011. So it's not going to be uh, Ohio State, of course. That's going to be a noon game. And I think Notre Dame is the only viable option out there for the second night game. And, you know, the TV networks don't have to have Michigan have a night game, of course, but I think because it's Michigan, because of the TV draw they have, that they certainly will. So the Notre Dame game, Saturday, October 26, you see the game time to be determined. The last two times these uh, Notre Dame came to University of Michigan Stadium, 2011, 2013, both night games, the first two night games in the history of Michigan Stadium. And then of course, you remember last year, the teams started off the season at a night game. So this will be the third night game for Jim Harbaugh in his five seasons as Michigan's coach to start off the year. Remember back in 2015, they started off the year on a Thursday night at Utah. So let's take a look at the other possible night games. It's not gonna be Ohio State. That game has been announced for noon 
uh, Eastern, as usually always, except there's been a few 330s in there over the years when it's a big time game. Could it be Rutgers? It could be, but it's not gonna be Big Ten Network because they've got this Middle Tennessee State. It'd be ABC, ESPN, so I don't think it'll be Rutgers. It's probably not gonna be Iowa. I'd almost guarantee that unless the TV networks really force their way in because that is homecoming. So Notre Dame, Michigan State. Now, there was always a rumor that, hey, they can't force Michigan to have Big Ten you know, night games after November 1st. That's actually fake news, but I think with this Michigan State game being so late, November 16th, Michigan's not going to want to have that one as a night game or the TV networks because of the possibility of really bad weather. So that October 26 game against Notre Dame makes a lot of sense. Michigan would have no say in the matter. The TV networks could force them to do it. So I think it's going to be that Notre Dame game. I want to, let's call it 3.9 Harbaugh heads on this one. Michigan, Notre Dame will be a night game for the second year in a row, last year at Notre Dame, and overall the third straight time Michigan has hosted the Fighting Irish in Ann Arbor. Let's take a look at the results. This will be, you know, I guess this will be game number eight under the likes. There have been six in the past, plus Middle Tennessee State will be number seven. The Thriller, 2011, Michigan come, came back where they down 17 points, something like that in the fourth quarter. Jeremy Gallon on that long touchdown pass, with under 20, or that long uh, reception under 20 seconds left. And then Roy Roundtree from Denard Robinson in the corner of the end zone to win it. 2013, kind of a blowout, all of a sudden 11 points was the difference finally. Michigan controlled that one. A really underwhelming game, Brady Hoke's last season against a really bad Penn State team. They eked out a win, 18 to 13. Then, 2017, that torrential downpour, Michigan State, Jim Harbaugh's first home night game, 14 to 10, I think. O'Korn uh, had five turnovers in that game, an absolute disaster. 2017, later in the year, it was the Karan Higdon and uh, Chris Evans show, 33-10 over at Minnesota. And last year, a game I was at, really fun game. So I guess I've been to uh, like four of these six games so far, the night games, 38 to 13, just absolute beatdown of Wisconsin, a uh, top 15 Wisconsin team. At the time, Michigan could probably score 55 if they wanted to during that game. So those are the six games in the past. I think the Notre Dame game will be a, uh, a night game for the University of Michigan in the 2019 season. All right, I want to now apologize to Jim Harbaugh. Jim Harbaugh, Michigan's football coach going into his fifth year. Jim, I want to give you an apology. Not for me, though. I want to apologize on behalf of, I guess, just human beings because you have to deal with the worst media members literally the laziest the the i guess just lack of preparation of media of any city in the country any college football coach any pro football coach or athlete and it got to a point yesterday where i had to apologize to you jim on twitter let me show you this tweet i threw up there it said i'm sorry coach jim this ann arbor and detroit uh, that's that ann arbor and detroit have the weakest sports media in america this is an amateur, amateur question from a dope of a reporter. Is what I call the guy, complete dope. I'm going to tell you who the reporter is in there in a second. I said to him, do better. And wait a second. I've got it in my ear. I've got my producer. We've actually got the footage. We're going to roll it here. Go ahead and roll that footage. You tell me what you think of this question. Hey, Jim, I know you're big on uh, social media. You tweeted about Joan Howard, but you never tweeted about Jim or John Beeline. People seem to be fired up about that. Can you kind of... Say why or why, why tweet about one and not the other? No, I think most people understood. I mean, I'm very good friends with John Beeline and uh, have tremendous respect for Coach Beeline. And uh, I've had a lot of learning experiences uh, watching him coach. Lives about a nine iron from my house. Come on, man. I had to cut that video off mid sentence right there. Tell my producer, I'm sick of these questions for Jim Harbaugh. So, Jim. If I didn't uh, you know, pursue uh, greatness outside of the state of Ohio, state of Michigan, where I grew up, my family's from, I'd have been there. I would have put a stop to that question for you. So I want you guys watching this, the number one audience of any Michigan football program in the world, you guys have tweeted this guy. He's some schmuck who works for like 97.1 radio station in Detroit. Riger, R-I-G-E-R, 1984, voice your displeasure, say, hey man, Ask better questions, okay? Don't be a complete bum. No one gives a shit about whether Jim Harbaugh tweeted about a coach, tweeted this coach, that stupid question. And I, for one, am sorry that Jim Harbaugh had to deal with that. Uh, now, going on from that one, I want to ask you guys to follow the Michigan Football Report on Instagram. We we got to a hot start a few weeks ago, then we took a little bit of a break from the show, but we are back and better than ever. And if you followed things like the Ron Johnson uh, transfer, that wouldn't have been a surprise to you. I announced that on my Instagram four or five weeks ago, the Michigan Football Report Instagram, at Michigan Football Report. We were at 888 followers, I think it is now. 
892 followers are telling me. Just got four just as I brought it up on screen. Thank you for those four follows. Let's get to 1,000. I'm going to do something special for you, the amazing Michigan Football Report audience, once we get to 1,000 Instagram followers. And I promise I'll be more active. Got out hot. And we've been, uh, we've been slacking a little bit over the last few weeks. So let's get us to 1,000. You'll always have access to my insider uh, scoops when I have them because I put the account on private, give you the scoop, and then make it public when the scoop is uh, off the story. So go ahead and follow today at Michigan Football Report. All right, let's keep it rolling. Is Michigan favored in every single game? Favored to go undefeated by the sports books? Four Harbaugh heads on this one. F. A C K fact. It is an absolute 100% fact that the sports books have favored Michigan in every single game they've got throughout the 2019 season. So, one of the Las Vegas sports books, I think it was the Golden Nugget, but I'll double check on that one. They re released their big time college football odds for almost every game, every reasonable game, every meaningful game in the 2019 season. Michigan favored in every single one, including. The Ohio State Buckeyes. Now, obviously, you see the last undefeated season. It's been 22 years since Michigan's been undefeated, but Sportsbook in Las Vegas thinks they're going to be favored, predicting they're favored. You can bet on these now in every single game. So let's look at the big ones. They listed seven games. They call these the marquee games for Michigan. Big time favorite in week two, the second game over Army, 17 and a half points. Uh, a couple weeks later, after a bye week, actually, the rare uh, week three bye week for Michigan, five on the road at Wisconsin. Few weeks after that, Iowa home for homecoming 12 point favorites. Heading on the to Penn State, a game which will be a night game, I believe. I think they've announced it already as a whiteout. Four and a half point favorites at Penn State, October 19th. Then you've got the big three. They're going to play in about a five week time, six week time, Notre Dame, Michigan State, and Ohio State, all at home. And the Golden Nugget has Michigan favorite in all of them. October 26th, six point favorite over Notre Dame, who beat Michigan last year. 13 and a half point favorites against Michigan State on November 16th. And then the final, October, I'm sorry, November 30th, Thanksgiving weekend, as of now, a three and a half point favorite over Ohio State and their first year head coach, Ryan Day. So if Jeremy Harbour doesn't win that one, I think there's gonna be a lot of pressure on him. But as of now, Michigan will be favored in every single game this season. Were last year, except there's a little bit of uh, uncertainty on Notre Dame. I think Notre Dame ended up being a one point favorite at game time, although Michigan was favored at this time last year in that game. So we'll see how these things play out over the summer and into the season. What are the Harbaugh heads that we are talking about? If you haven't watched the show before, where you been? But I'll explain it for you one more time. We get zero Harbaugh heads. That is totally false. Fake news. One Harbaugh head is a small shred of truth. Two Harbaugh heads. People are talking. Three Harbaugh heads. It's pretty likely we've got a source, but haven't triple confirmed it yet. And if we go to four Harbaugh heads, that is me. It's the F-A-C-K fact. That is how Jim Harbaugh spells it. That is how we spell it here at the Michigan Football Report, presented by Chat Sports. And you notice we are on the road again. The Michigan Football Report and our amazing transportation sponsor, the Chroma Key Express. Chicka, 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 chicka. We went to Delaware, we went to New York City. Now we're in Texas, baby. Check this out. We got the Alamo right here over my shoulder. We are in San Antonio, Texas. Howdy, partner, as they say in Wayne's world. I am in Texas and I am loving it. I'm taking the show all over the country. Thanks to you, the number one, the undisputed, undefeated, best audience of any Michigan football program. And I'll tell you what, it's almost 100 degrees here in Texas. I am hot as hell. I'm, I'm taking this coat off, okay? My Michigan football line sports coat. I'm tossing it down here. And I, right after the show, when we're done filming, I am going to head over to the Riverwalk and have all kinds of beers. So if you're there, hit me up on Instagram, hit me up on Twitter. We'll meet up for some drinks. But we are in Texas, baby, and we are loving it next week. Might be going to Hawaii, I'm not sure. All right, I broke this story last night. I am supremely confident about it. Oliver Martin, who I had in my first uh, Michigan football spring depth chart as the starting slot to transfer. I'm gonna give it three Harbaugh heads because I only have one source on it, very good source. Oliver Martin, Michigan's third, gonna be his third year, uh, redshirt in 2017, got some limited action in 2018, will be transferring as early as this weekend. So let me take a look at the tweet I put out yesterday, I said, a lot of chatter that wide receiver Oliver Martin is headed out of town. And basically what I think this means is you can see it there on the screen. We're going to hear about it soon. I put this out on Thursday. Perhaps today we're going to hear it. I think he's going to head to Iowa. 
I think that means that Mike Sainer is still not only beat him out in the spring, but he has put in the work in post spring in the last month, month and a half since spring practice has ended. So let's take a look at the depth chart at wide receiver pending Oliver Martin's official transfer going into the transfer portal. I've got Nico, Donovan Peoples Jones, and Tariq Black as your true traditional three wide receiver set that'll just be impossible to stop with the right offense. I got Mike Sainer still, the true freshman who, who enrolled early, now is the starter at slot. And I think that's one of the reasons that Oliver Martin is headed out of town. I expect him to be in the transfer portal in a matter of days. Let's take a look at his stats. Didn't really make as much of an impact as a four-star wide receiver as many would have expected. 13 career games, played in every game last year, only one touchdown though, 11 catches for a buck 25. Not a huge impact. Now, here's where the source gets a little bit uh, interesting. This is why I was willing to put my name on it yesterday on Twitter. I was told he stuck around to take some sort of class. I don't know if Michigan is like a five week class after the normal, uh, their normal um, semester, spring semester, but that he did not renew his lease for June 1st. And that was a big sign that he'd been talking about transferring, expecting to put his name in the portal potentially go to Iowa. I'm not sure if he's going to you know, claim that he was a, a victim of something like everybody else is these days uh, to get instant eligibility. But nevertheless, I expect him to go to Iowa, will likely sit out next season unless the NCAA just had you know, left all transfer rules have gone out the window now. But I expect him to transfer to Iowa where he's from as early, we should hear about it, as early as potentially this weekend. So keep an eye out for that one. Now, if you guys haven't yet Follow me on Twitter. You see the name wrong side right there. James Yoder. I used to be James T. Yoder. Got rid of the T. I called up Twitter. I said, yo, give me my name. Someone's squatting on my name. They gave me the name at James Yoder. So if you're following James T, I think it's some imposter account at this point. But nevertheless, give me a like below in the comments on Facebook, on YouTube. If you like, if you follow me on Twitter already, give me a like. I'll show you guys some love. I'll follow you back if you give a like in the comments on YouTube and on Facebook. Let's take it over to the next rumor. Donovan Peoples-Jones, another one of these rumors. I'm glad that they uh, they took my studio time away because we have all these new shows we're launching at Chat Sports. I was going to announce that I was hearing some you know troubling things about him when he didn't go to South Africa, but now I'm 50-50 on it, hearing a lot of things in the positive direction that he is near 100% and will be 100% by the time the season starts. Head of a soft tissue issue, not really a doctor myself, although I did go to medical school for a couple years. Uh, but some people were saying early on that this was like a, 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 a Nick Bosa from Ohio State. Is it Joey Bosa or Nick Bosa? I can't remember. The one that set out the season was the number two pick in the draft this year. DPJ missed the 2019 se uh, spring practice with the injury. Harbaugh had said during spring practice that it could be season threatening, which I think freaked a lot of people out. But I think Harbaugh says that to motivate some players to get healthy sometimes. And then he didn't make the trip to South Africa like some other Michigan wide receivers. And as such, I've got his two Harbaugh heads. If I hear some more good news, I'm gonna push it to three Harbaugh heads. But I'm thinking the way the momentum, the way the tide is turning on DPJ, it could be three Harbaugh heads. I could be giving him the full stamp of approval within a few weeks, a few programs down the line. Let's take a look at the man that is Michigan's best receiver in, in some people's opinions. I've got him as our number two receiver behind Nico Collins. 47 catches, 612 yards, right at a 13 yards per catch average, and eight touchdowns. Michigan's really true deep threat, especially that game versus Michigan State when he broke it open with a touchdown from Shea Patterson. So DPJ here and he is trending towards a uh, healthy return in 2018. I know some people thought maybe, maybe he was going to miss a few games, maybe miss half the season because of that soft tissue injury. He was Michigan's leading receiver last year from a, uh, from a catches perspective, although Nico Collins did have more yards. Peoples Jones, 47 receptions for 612 yards. Nico Collins, 38 for 632. Nico, much more of a big play threat, I think, you know, uh, not necessarily on streaks, but certainly 20 yard to 30 yard kind of in routes and passes. Then you have a big drop off, big time drop off. Sean McCune and then Oliver Martin, if he in fact returns, it should put a question mark on that Oliver Martin too, like we did on the depth chart. But those are Michigan's leading returning receivers. Now, let's take a look at rumor number six here on the Michigan Football Report. As I said, the show that the AD and the blog boys don't want you to know about because we tell you what's actually going on with Michigan football and not this, uh, this uh, company line that you get from the blog boys and the pay sites. No big interest in Brandon Peters. I'm giving this one four Harbaugh heads. He put the feelers out all spring to teams like Minnesota, Purdue, 
other schools in the, you know, some of the schools in the, the ACC, some former Big East schools, didn't have really much interest at all. And now he's kind of fallen back to Illinois is where he's going to be visiting this weekend, maybe on campus by the time you're watching this. Then next week's going to do a little Ohio shuffle, Bowling Green State University, BG, and Miami, Ohio, the Red Hawks, where ironically Alex Malzone transferred last year. Now we'll be transferring again. But the Purdue rumors that a lot of the blog boys are putting out there, I bought into them, thought they had sources, turned out to be very fake news, very little interest from Purdue's side from what we've heard. Started four games in 2017, and as you'll see, really was just beyond brutal from a statistical perspective. 51% completion percentage, throwing for 680 yards in his career, four touchdowns, three interceptions, but as you all know, didn't see the field at all really in 2018, only had two pass completions last season. I had him as low as fifth on the depth chart coming into what would be his redshirt junior year. So Brandon Peters, he gone, but it's not to greener pastures. It seems like it is to, uh, I don't know, brown or yellower pastures, whatever the colors are, uh, pastures that aren't good, that is where Brandon Peters will be because the big time programs didn't have interest in him coming on to, uh, to their program after leaving Michigan. So that is the latest story on Brandon Peters. Want to ask you guys to download us. If you've got an iPhone, check it out. Chatsports.com slash Yoder. This show in video form is available on the Apple iTunes podcast app. You pull up your phone, we can do one of these bad boys. You can say, hey Siri, subscribe to the Michigan Football Report podcast. And she'll probably say you are subscribed to it, but nevertheless, that's that easy on iPhone. If you have an iPhone, Go to Android, just type in Michigan Football Report, the number one show on YouTube, Facebook Live. We're, we're going to make a commitment to podcast, but uh, make sure you do that. If you want to take us on the go, you can always listen in the background if you want as well. Chatsports.com slash Yoder. Easy way. It'll redirect you right to the podcast on iPhone. Go ahead and subscribe today. All right. Rumor number seven. Is Michigan scary good going into next year? Well, here is the latest, like on the word on the street that the uh, the, the Michigan credentialed media, uh, credentialed and clueless, I call them, were putting out there on the message boards and the Reddit forums and Twitter DMs and Facebook groups yesterday, is that there were a couple of people that, uh, that claim that they're Michigan reporters, I don't know if they are, whether or not, blog boys, that said they overheard Jim Harbaugh answering a question, how's the team looking next year, that they were, he, that Harbaugh replied, scary good, especially on offense, is what the, uh, the, the blog boys are saying. So I'm giving it two Harbaugh heads. I don't have any source on this one, but if Michigan, th if Jim Harbaugh thinks Michigan is scary good, that can only mean that the offense and then now the practice on their own that uh, that first year offensive coordinator Josh Gass has been installing is you know, tearing up the defense a little bit. I'm not sure what it is. Josh Gaz was hired in January, took over the failing Pep Hamilton, who's now on to the XFL. Three straight losing seasons for Michigan. Three straight years Michigan's lost Ohio State and the bowl game. Fans are fed up. They don't want to hear any more talk from Jim Harbaugh. But this is kind of a cool thing to hear, right? If Jim Harbaugh thinks it's scary good, I am excited to hear about it. But that is two Harbaugh heads. Jim Harbaugh rumored to have said Michigan is scary good going into next year. So maybe he'll, uh, maybe he'll have some things uh, that, that we'll have there. But let's take a look at what wasn't scary good. Was their offense last year, 419 yards per game, number 49 in the country, folks. This isn't Chad Henney's Michigan offense or John Navarre. This is 2018, 2019, when teams are putting up 700 yards a game. Michigan just under 420. Passing, number 79 in the country. Are you kidding me? With those wide receivers, Shea Patterson, number 30 rushing. Score the ball a lot. I think it's more due to the defense more than any philosophy that Michigan had on offense with that one. But nevertheless, Michigan's 2018 offense, scary, not good in my opinion. Maybe they can be scary good if Jim Harbaugh believes it going in to 2019 with Josh Gass. But I want to ask you guys a question about the Michigan football offense. Do you think, and I'll just call it yards per game in this one, do you think Michigan will have a top 10 offense in 2019, in yards, let's say about yards, because points can be, who knows, in yards, where I think it really counts for an offense. Type one for yes, type two for no. I'm gonna go no, because I am sick of the talk from you know the, the, the off-season national champion Michigan football team. I wanna see it on the field. I wanna go for a throw. I wanna see Shea Patterson throw the ball 45 times if, if that's what uh, the defense is giving him, if the wide receivers are taking advantage of it. So type one for yes, type two for no. Will Michigan be a top 10 offense in yards in 2019. All right, it's May 31st. That means tomorrow is June 1st. Dax Hill, five-star recruit, will be on campus for Harbaugh heads. F-A-C-K, Daxton Hill, 
Michigan's number one recruit from the 2019 class who decommitted, then committed to Alabama, then came back to Michigan in an epic move on signing day. He will move in tomorrow, start summer school. It's the first day early enrollees or uh, first day non-early enrollees can be on campus and take advantage of their scholarship. Only five star incoming freshmen. And I, that's me, Yoder, I expect him to be a starter at free safety, likely from day one. So I expect big things from Dax Hill, but keep an eye out for this one. Daxton Hill on campus tomorrow. We might hear some rumors just, you know, percolating out of Michigan's football program about how much of an impact he should be making right from day one. So keep an eye out for that one. We got one more rumor for you. Before we go, I want to ask you guys to make sure, if you haven't yet, follow us on the brand new Michigan Football Report YouTube channel. I call up my friends at Google, Sergi and Larry. I said, hey guys, Michigan TV, Yoder needs it. They said, no problem. We've got you, James. We've got you covered. They gave us the URL, Michigan TV. Is that the best URL for a YouTube channel in history? You can get us on Facebook Live, on podcast, but YouTube's where we're putting our resources in. We're gonna put all of our stuff on YouTube. We're, uh, you know, two, 3,000 followers, subscribers now. Let's get up to 5,000. I might do something crazy, like shave my head on, 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 uh, on air. Won't do that probably, but, but you never know. Get us to 5,000, youtube.com slash Michigan TV. The last rumor. Is the Michigan been the number the 19th best program in college football this decade? Well, Sporting News put out their ranking based on all this ridiculous criteria, and they say so. So I'm giving it two Harbaugh heads that Michigan is the 19th best program. And some people are saying, well, James, Michigan's only been in the playoff two of the last three years. How could that be possible? Well, you got to remember, 2010, that was still Rich Rod's last year. 7-6 and six after two losing seasons. Then you get Brady Hoke, one good year, three bad years, well, two really bad years, one average year. And then Jim Harbaugh's been decent, but he certainly hasn't been, you know, epically successful like 12-1, and 13-1 seasons. So the team is 76-40 and 40 since 2010. A lot of those losses kind of front-loaded on the, the beginning of that. The fourth-ranked team, according to this list, in the Big Ten since uh, since 2010, you've got Ohio State, of course, they're going to be up there. But let's take a look at Michigan's records really quick, and then I'll tell you about the four Big Ten teams. We'll go through the full top 20. Michigan, of course, 10 and, 7 and 6 in 2010 under Rich Rod, 11 and 2, 8 and 5, 7 and 6, and then 5 and 7 under Brady Hoke. Hoke, of course, after that disastrous 5 and 7 season in 2014, got fired. In comes Jim Harbaugh with a really, I think, eye opening 10 and 3 season in 15, and then I think disappointing last three years from a lot of perspectives. To 16-18, going to the Ohio State game, you win that, you're in the playoff as long as you take care of business in the Big Ten Championship game, but lost the last two games, Ohio State in the bowl game, three straight years, and in 2017, three straight games, Wisconsin, Ohio State, South Carolina. So, can't really argue with this list, but let's walk through the top 20 in college football this decade according to Sporting News. Alabama, Clemson, no surprise, multiple national titles for both teams. I think we're going to have five or four this decade for Alabama, one in 2009 for Nick Saban. Ohio State, Florida State, kind of a surprising one with one national title, but several down years. Oklahoma, number five, no surprise there. Then you've got LSU. Stanford, you know, maybe Jim Harbaugh takes a little credit for that one. He was there in 2010. Oregon, Auburn, and then you got a second Big Ten team in there in Wisconsin, who I don't think many can argue with that. They've had a number of highly successful seasons, certainly more than Michigan has had in this same time frame. 11 through 15, you've got Notre Dame, Georgia, Florida, Michigan State. They've got a Big Ten title or two. They've got a playoff appearance. Michigan doesn't. Texas A&M at number 15. That's actually one that was a little bit surprising to me. Then you got Oklahoma State, also surprising that they've got a better you know state than you know ranking than Michigan over this decade. Washington, Boise State. Then you've got Michigan and USC there at number 20. The criteria I'll read it here from the Sporting News: you get points for national champions, 10 points each. Title game appearances, five. College World Playoff appearances, five points. BCS, New Year's Six Bowls, three points. Heisman Trophy winners, two each. And I'm sure there's some more points in there, probably. I don't know what they were, but those are the big ones that they based this on. So, with that being said, number 19 program over the last decade, I guess the last nine seasons, this is the last year of the, uh, the 2010 decades. Will Michigan make the college football playoffs in the next three seasons? 2019, 2020, 2021. You've got Shea Patterson this year. They probably got Dale McCaffrey for those next two seasons if uh, he turns out to hold off Joe Milton and some other uh, players trying to take his job at the quarterback position. Will Michigan 
make the playoff in the next three seasons. Type Y for yes, or I'm sorry, just type yes or no in the comments below. Facebook Live, the chats with the Michigan Football TV YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Michigan TV, yes or no. Well, I don't know from you guys. I'll jump in the comments section below after I see a few of your responses let you know my answer to this question. We will be back next week with Michigan football, true or false. I am James Yoder, the undisputed, undefeated king of Michigan football media. We'll see you then, and go blue. Hey there, Michigan football fans. Thanks so much for watching the Michigan Football Report. If you haven't already, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. We've got Michigan football news, rumors, recruiting information, and inside access to the Michigan football program. You ready for another Michigan football video? I got you hooked up right here. Go Blue.